I don't know that evangelical Christianity today defines salvation as worship. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, Proverbs 9.10. I don't know that there's a lot of fear of the Lord, nor am I convinced that there is a great occupation with loving the Lord, your God, with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. And we know what it means to love the Lord, but what does it mean to take his name in vain? The name Yahweh appears 7,000 times in the Old Testament. Everybody knew that that was the name. And since God was so explicit to say, do not take the name in vain, that name which was so familiar and so often on their lips, even if coded in a different direction for the sake of honoring his holiness was to be used only in the most serious ways. What do you mean, don't take the name of the Lord in vain? Well, let's talk about some possible significance that that could have. First, listen to Leviticus 24, 15, and 16. If anyone curses God, then he shall bear his sin. Moreover, the one who blasphemes the name of the Lord shall surely be put to death. Stone him. The alien, as well as the native, when he blasphemes the name, shall be put to death. So one way of taking the Lord's name in vain is to blaspheme the name. What does that mean? That means to accuse God of any evil, any ignorance, any incompetence, any impotence, or anything that is less than who he truly is. To declare that God is not who he reveals himself to be. That is a form of cursing God. And that is normally done because people are bothered by the biblical revelation of God. So they would like to determine that God is not nearly as harsh about sins and immorality as some things in the Bible may appear to make him sound. So they, they, they want to say that God is more tolerant of sin. Or they want to say that God really can't possibly know the future because if he knew the future, he'd do something about it before we get into this mess. So he either doesn't know the future, he doesn't have the power to change the future. All these are forms of blaspheming God, not overtly, but covertly. Leviticus 19 adds another way that the name of the Lord can be taken in vain. You shall not swear falsely by my name as to profane the name of the Lord your God. I am holy. So you don't, in trying to convince someone of something that is false, swear by the name of God so they think you're telling the truth because you wouldn't put yourself in such a position before God. It's like telling a lie and they, then saying, this is true, so help me, God. That is taking the, the Lord's name in vain. There's another way that the Lord's name is taken in vain. There are many more than I'll give you, but I'm suggesting a few. And that is to make the false claim that you have heard from God and speak for him when you haven't and you don't. Turn to Jeremiah 23. Jeremiah 23. Some familiar words I know, starting at verse 15. Jeremiah 23. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets. Behold, I'm going to feed them wormwood, make them drink poisonous water, 
For from the prophets of Jerusalem, pollution has gone forth into all the land. Thus says the Lord of hosts, do not listen to the words of the prophets who are prophesying to you. They are leading you into futility. They speak a vision of their own imagination, not from the mouth of the Lord. They keep saying to those who despise me, the Lord has said, you will have peace. And as for everyone who walks in the stubbornness of his own heart, they say calamity will not come upon you. But who has stood in the counsel of the Lord that he should see and hear his word? Who has given heed to his word and listened? Behold, the storm of the Lord has gone forth in wrath, even a whirling tempest that will swirl down on the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has performed and carried out the purposes of his heart. In the last days, you will clearly understand it. I did not send these prophets, but they ran. I did not speak to them, but they prophesied. If they had stood in my counsel, then they would have announced my words to my people and would have turned them back from their evil way and from the evil of their deeds. Am I a God who is near, declares the Lord, and not a God far off? They're saying they heard from me and I said certain things. They didn't hear from me and I didn't say those things. They're offering a peaceful message. They're stripping out the offensive part of the message. They're saying everything is going to be fine. Calamity will not come on you. We hear this so commonly today. God loves you. He just wants you to be happy and successful and fulfilled. And this is supposed to be the message from God. That is taking the Lord's name in vain. Another way you take the Lord's name in vain is to worship the Lord in any way that diminishes his glory. Listen to Leviticus 22. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, tell Aaron and his sons to be careful with the holy things which they dedicate to me so as not to profane my holy name. I am the Lord, that person shall be cut off. A warning to Aaron, to the priests, that how they handled the holy things that were part and parcel of God's prescribed worship was a serious issue. How they handled holy things was a serious enough issue that if they profaned his holy name by deviating from the prescription that he gave them, they would be executed. This is Old Testament priests handling physical things. How much more frightening would be the indictment on one who handled the word of God. In Isaiah chapter 1, the prophet Isaiah speaks to the issue of Israel's sinful worship. What are your multiplied sacrifices to me, verse 11, says the Lord? I've had enough of burnt offering of rams and the fat of fed cattle. I take no pleasure in the blood of bulls and lambs and goats. When you come to appear before me, who requires of you this trampling of my courts? Bring your worthless offerings no longer. Incense is an abomination to me, new moon and Sabbath, the calling of assemblies. I cannot endure iniquity in the solemn assembly. I hate your new moon festivals and your appointed feasts. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. And remember, God had prescribed them all and told the people of Israel to observe them. And yet they became a burden to him. He was weary of bearing them. So when you spread out your hands in prayer, I will hide my eyes from you. Yes, even though you multiply prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are covered with blood. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Remove the evil of your deeds from my sight. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Reprove the ruthless. Defend the orphan. 
plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are as scarlet, they will be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they will be like wool. If you consent and obey, you will eat the best of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you'll be devoured by the sword. Truly, the mouth of the Lord has spoken. I don't think you want to call somebody into worship who hasn't been washed, who hasn't been cleansed. 